Hello and welcome to Wild High Reefers. I'm Sky Anderson, and today I want to talk about my quarantine system. Now, I get my quarantine system differently than most people, and I think it makes the system itself much more successful. So come check out how I have my system set up and why I think it's easier and more successful than the average quarantine system. Most people don't quarantine their fish. And to me, this is a huge mistake. There are a couple fish I won't quarantine, like a mandarin goby or something like that, where it's hard to feed them because they live on the copiopods and ampiopods and the live rock. And you'll, you saw when I had those tile fish, I didn't quarantine those either because they were less likely to have disease and they are an incredibly hard fish and that was a huge gamble I took but for the most part I quarantine every fish that comes into my system as you can see I've got a brand new chevron tang sitting in here and he's in quarantine now this is one of the most beautiful fish I've ever owned and it's really hard to have him in a quarantine tank where he's gonna be for a month or at least close to that I might decide to put him in a little early but nonetheless, he's going to be in quarantine until I decide that he's healthy over the long term. For a lot of people, quarantining is hard. There are major issues with it. First, the fish don't always take well to quarantine. And it is absolutely 100% true that fish die in quarantine that if they were put into a main display would have made it just because the stresses of quarantine first water quality in quarantine is almost never as good as it is in the main display second there isn't the rock work in quarantine normally for them to hide in third it's an extra stressor right you're taking them from one tank to another tank and then finally to another tank so that's another problem but for me the rewards are worth the risk. If you have tangs and other fish in your main display, by bringing a new fish in, you risk introducing the, the current fish to diseases. Now, ick is the disease that I've struggled with in the past with tangs. That's the biggest ones, although there's many other diseases to worry about. But the fact is, is once you get a disease in your main display, it is very difficult to deal with it. But in quarantine, diseases are very easy to deal with. So if this Chevron Tang was to develop ick, dealing with it is very easy. I dose the tank with Coopermine, which is a copper mace medication, and I watch him over time, I monitor the Cooper mean process, and 90% of the time, your fish is gonna be fine. The problem is, you can't dose Cooper mean into a reef tank. If you dose Cooper mean or any copper-based medication into a tank with invertebrates, so I'm talking about corals, shrimp, crabs, starfish, any invertebrate, if you dose a copper-based medication in there, you will kill your invertebrates, 100% guaranteed, and you're also going to nuke your display at the same time. If you have live rock and you dose cupramine, you will kill the entire live rock. You're going to have major nutrient issues. It's a horrible thing. So even Fowler tanks, you can't dose cupramine. You can't dose copper-based medications. The people who can get away with it are the people with fish only tanks that have, let's call it, structures in their tank. So bleached corals or just a regular rock that's not meant to be live rock or <clears throat> kind of the molded reef sculptures that are kind of made out of epoxy and stuff like that. Those guys can get away with it because there isn't much in the tank to kill other than the bacterial colonies that live in the sand. And even that's kind of hit or miss as to whether you're actually going to kill it with Coopermine or a copper-based medication. I just use Coopermine because it has a great reputation when I've used it in the past. It's worked really well. And mainly I'm talking about ick right now because that's what I've only ran into. There are other medications you'll have to use for other diseases. 
But my system's a little different than most, and I've set mine up to make it really easy. So I've shown you in the past the way the water chain system works and all of that. So if you haven't seen that, check that out. The description's down below. Now, I do my quarantine setup very different than a lot of people do. My system is basically a very simple fish only system. You'll see, I run a sand bed. Most people will go bare bottom. I run a sand bed because I want all that beneficial bacteria in there. One problem you're gonna have when you keep a quarantine system is you gotta do water changes basically daily, right? Because your fish is gonna produce waste, but you have no way to change that ammonia into something less dangerous. We're all familiar with the nitrogen cycle where you have ammonia changed from ammonia to nitrite to nitrate, which is the least dangerous for your fish. Ammonia will absolutely kill your fish. And without a nitrogen cycle, it builds up very quickly in your system. But I've got a full nitrogen cycle in my system because of all that rock right there. It's loaded up with bacteria. So when the fish goes to the bathroom, all that ammonia is turned from nitrite to nitrate, and I've got minimal issues with that. Nitrate will basically cause me algae issues, and in really high quantities, it will cause stress to the fish. But basically, algae is my big concern with nitrates, where if I was to not have the sand bed, I would be worried about ammonia, which can be lethal and heavily stressful on the fish. So that's why I use a sand bed. A lot of people will tell you don't do that. Why do they say don't do that? Because when you have to dose your tank with copper-based medication, you can wipe out the bacteria that live in that sand. Now, I don't dose copper-based medication unless I absolutely see a problem with the fish. First, copper-based medication can kill my sand bed. Second, it is really stressful on the fish. Certain fish, like angelfish, it can be lethal to them. So I try not to dose copper-based medication unless I absolutely have to. So that's how I get away with the sand bed, is I'm not dosing copper-based medication unless it's an issue. Now, when I have dosed copper-based medication, I've never personally seen a decline in my system's ability to run the nitrogen cycle. So when I've dosed the copper-based medication to cure ick issues in the past, my system's absolutely been able to maintain the nitrogen cycle even with the copper-based medication in there. So from my experience, I swear by it. So the rest of the system is really pretty simple. I've got an Aqua C hang on back protein skimmer back here. And that's just to remove waste, right? As that fish eats, he's gonna poo, and that's gonna pull a lot of that out of the water. It's not near as effective as the big protein skinner on the main display, but it does a reasonably good job on a 29 gallon tank. And then I've also got a power head on there for water flow. Now, fish actually need water flow. They need water flow to keep themselves healthy and strong. That water flow blowing around is actually something they need, right? It gives them a current to swim again. It's like a person on a treadmill getting exercise. It's a very important fish. Now you will see a hang on the back filter on there. Now that is actually broken, doesn't work. I just need to take it off and throw it away and I haven't done it. It's just not a big deal as of right now. And I've got a heater and a light. And that's all there is to my system. It's a very basic system. But the key is I've got a protein skimmer on there to pull waste out before it can break down. And I've got the sand bed in there to run an actual nitrogen cycle. And then this tank, I just leave set up all the time. So when I get the whim at the fish store, I can bring my fish home and I've got good water with good water quality and I've got a good nitrogen cycle already in the rocks. So I don't have to worry about any of that. I'm good to go. So for me, that's how I make my night how I make my system easy. Now I'll still do a lot of water changes 
and I've got my system set up to do the water changes easily. Now I do water changes just to keep those nitrates low and to make sure that everything's fine. I'll do a water change every five days or so and I test my system. I make sure I don't have ammonia, nitrate, nitrate, something building up. But really, there's nothing hard about my setup. And for me, that sand bed and that protein skimmer makes the quarantine system so much easier. So if you're struggling with a quarantine system and maintaining good water, I highly recommend you try it with a sand bed and a protein skimmer, realizing the caveats that go along with those two issues. So anyways, I thought I'd put this video out there, give you my perspective on quarantining, how I do it, why I do it, and hopefully this helps you out. So thank you for watching this episode of Mile High Reefers. If you like what I do, hit the like button. If you haven't yet subscribed, subscribe. And continue to follow my channel as this beautiful Chevron Tang will be going in the 210 tank relatively soon. Thanks again for watching.